praise his wonderful name. Amen. Why don't you turn to someone and say, I'm glad to be here today, and it's good to see you. Amen. Borrowing a page from the UPC here. Get my house in order here. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me to the book of Genesis, chapter number 1, verse 26, and Genesis 3 and 1. Star Church and what I see here that you have believed the Lord have learned how to be have learned how to show yourselves friendly amen therefore we are making you are opening doors to souls that have come and, and need a contact with somebody that cares and that's what our that's what our we should be like we should be desirous to be a bridge between them and the Lord a stepping stone so they can get closer to God. Amen. So you continue to yield of yourselves of a, of a kind spirit and let the Lord, amen, bless you. If we read from the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowls of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Main portion here that I want you, theme that I want you to take from this verse is, and let them have dominion. They want to say dominion. Genesis 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yes, hath God said, Ye shall not eat out of every tree of the garden. So we want to, I want you to note that the serpent is more subtle, wise, astute than any of the beasts that have been created. Lord, we're thankful to be in your presence. Lord, to feel your power. Lord, to listen to your words. We are asking, oh Lord God, that you, you would minister to us as we yield ourselves unto you. And let us take dominion over that which you've given us. In the name of Jesus, I ask it. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to take a few moments to bring to you a thought on taking dominion. Taking dominion. We, when we read the verse of Scripture, uh, we find that we find that the devil, first of all, as they say, he never sleeps. We read where, and I know that many of you are, uh, have gone through the Bible study before, but you should know this by now, that Adam had been given dominion from the beginning. That this was God's intention, that he would have authority. Authority over all the beasts of the field. And so this was God given to him. And so as we, as we learn this, we know that then he is confronted by a, a serpent which is more subtle than over all the beasts of the field. And his purpose is to not have, to not have be subject to Adam, but he comes along so that he can take dominion away from Spiritual dominion away from Adam. And this is, this is, the, story of, this is the story of the ages. This is the, tr this is the truth of what took place. That the devil came and he, he told the woman in these terms, when she conversed with him, that you shall not surely die. And... You had God really said that you can take out of every tree? He put doubt into her mind. And he said, he, did he say, you shall not eat out of every tree of the garden? And so with this, this is the main tool 
that he used to take dominion away from the man, spiritual dominion, and put the man under his feet. This took, by doing this, he put, took mankind and put him under his thumb. By doing this, he took control of a fallen nature of man so that he could manipulate him and move, and move upon his pride and upon his emotions to keep him a sinner after that he took from the tree. Now we know this, that mankind, all of mankind is guilty because of this. And we are not guilty of eating there, but we are guilty in the sense that we have a dead spirit. We, when we bear children, they have a life expectancy. That means they're going to die in the future. Everyone has death in them. And so, by fear of death, the devil took dominion and put fear in everybody where the main thought was basically survival. When he, they should have realized that they had dominion even they would have had dominion over spiritual aspect. Yet here, you and I, when we came, before we came to the truth, there was an uncertainty in our lives about what was going to happen to us. Can someone say amen? amen. And so this, is, this was the problem. Adam had dominion from the beginning. Adam lost dominion to the serpent. The word sin appears then when we, read the, when we read the event of Cain and Abel. They both brought sacrifices to the Lord. Abel's was a blood sacrifice. It was accepted. Cain brought one of the works of his hands, which was vegetables. And when he brought this, he was not, he was not accepted. His offering was denied. And so the Bible tells us that his face, his countenance was fallen, and the Lord knew it. And he said, why is, why is your countenance fallen, Cain? And he told him, listen, if you do right, notice what he said, if you do right, everything's going to be all right. But if not, he said, sin lies at the door. In other words, if you don't do what is right, then you're going to, when you leave this place, you're going to step into sin. You're going to walk in sin. You're going to live in sin, is what he was telling them. And so now we get an idea of what you and I face from our ancestors. We face the same dilemma. We have the dilemma that he leaves. And uh, no, he, never, he didn't watch a lot of movies that he said, you know, I was schooled into killing my brother. He didn't have anybody telling him that this is what he, uh, that this is what he should do. But it seems like in his mind and in his spirit, he was so grieved that his nature simply took upon himself to go and kill his brother Abel. Every one of us, as innocent as we might be, and maybe not having been in a bad, raised in a bad environment, we still have that ability to be the worst or to do the worst of the worst. I don't know if there's much worse than murdering your brother. Horrible. It's a terrible thing that a man would raise up against his blood brother and kill him. And so you would think that all things being equal, the Lord would have killed or put a death sentence on Cain, but he didn't. Why was that? Because he was not taught what was on the inside, rose up and committed sin. There was no law that he had heard that said, do, thou shalt not kill. But from the inside of him, the Lord had told him, if you do right, you see, there's something innate about us that we know right from wrong. We have a moral, a, a soul that has, deals on morality and is without uh, instruction. We know what is good and bad to a degree. It is in our spirit. It is in our soul. But we don't have direction. And what rose up in him, he had no instruction in him. He didn't have in him a word uh, that he might not sin against the Lord. 
And so this is the platform that mankind uh, lives on, on sin. We were born in sin and shapen in iniquity. We were born to lose. We were born losers. And uh, as we began to grow, we came across what is called the gospel. Can you say amen to that? If you've come across the gospel. If you do right, he said everything's going to be all right, but if not, sin lies at the door. The problem with sin, S-I-N, one man said, is the I in the middle of it. Yeah. That is it, is that we and I find ourselves in the middle of sin. We are, you and I are the big I there. And unless we confess it, we will never get out of it. So therefore, sin is such that it is abhorrent to the Lord. He does not, he cannot tolerate sin in his presence. Now this is why the Lord came and sacrificed his life so that you and I could have what is called salvation. So that we could find a way out of the dilemma. Being born sinners, the Lord came and told us, you must be born again of the water and of the spirit. This is the gospel because he knew that we were sinners uh, and he was laying out uh, a plan to redeem us. Therefore, the Lord goes and he baptized. Uh, the, the Bible says, tells us that when, he, uh, that when he arose from the dead, that he commanded baptism. So because baptism was going to be the beginning of the solution to this gigantic problem. If you don't know Jesus today and your conscience is, is hurt and you have pain in your life, and your life has been out of control. And perhaps you've had no, no one to really help mentor you. Listen, it's not too late. We have all been there. We have all understood that we were all as sheep gone astray. But now we have returned to the shepherd of our soul. I'm so thankful that a preacher came and preached to me how to get back with or how to get right in my spirit. And so the preacher preached to me. And I, then I understood that what Jesus said. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. Why is that so important? Because there's, there's two things. There's the children of righteousness and there are the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience are those that maybe have not heard about the gospel, are in their natural state. They've never come and surrendered their life to the Lord uh, and given themselves to water baptism, the ultimate sacrifice. That is our sacrifice right there. When Jesus, when Jesus left, he commanded for us to be baptized. Now, why is it important to be baptized? Because that's where the sin nature is going to be dealt with. That is where you and I are going to get our freedom. That is where you and I are going to be set free. You and I are going to be able to get the, get the, 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 the power of sin off of us so that sin will not have dominion over us anymore. That is the point of it. Sinners, we used to be sinners, but now we have been saved by grace. And I, the Lord wants me to remind you, you are not to live like sinners because God has saved you through Jesus Christ and he, he, he called you unto righteousness. He called you into wanting to do that or giving you the power to do that which is Right. Yes. Glory. Now, the devil, when we, when, the, when, when we talk about taking dominion, I want to make note of this, that the devil, you must have dominion over his temptations. The devil knows who you are. There is a real powerful entity called Satan. 
called the devil, who, who, whose name is, was Lucifer. People today worship Lucifer. People worship the devil. They have symbols of serpents. They worship him as the dragon. He's, he's soon to appear as the Antichrist. And so you must have, be set free through water baptism so that you might have this peace in your life. The scripture says this. This is, maybe you don't know this. Maybe you don't recognize it. Maybe you have not hid this in your heart that you might not sin against them. It says, know you not that so many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Now, Jesus had the power and he arose victorious over death, sin, the grave. And so when we talk about Jesus, that we were buried with him, the Bible says that therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Now, a dead person cannot sin. This is why it's very important when you come and you want to be baptized, that you have come with repentance to change your life. Because death, you are going to share his death. You are going there when you go in and you go into the water. It's not something, it's not, an, it's not a sign of an inward work. It is, uh, um, it is the method that the Lord said, when you do this, I'm going to hide you in the grave and you're going to be dead with me. And if you can accept the death, through repentance, then what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to raise you up in newness of life. I'm going to give you an opportunity, amen, to change your life. Now, that's the opportunity that you're going to have. Now, when you were born a sinner, you, do, you didn't know that you were born a sinner. You just naturally like to do bad stuff because it was in your nature. But when that nature got you to the point where enough is enough. I don't want to do this drug anymore. I don't want to be involved in a bunch of messed up relationships. I don't want to, I don't want to be neglectful of my life. I don't want to abuse my life with, with witchcraft, with drugs. And you come to a point like this. This is a point that I came to in my life. I didn't want to have this have dominion over my life. And I was sick of it. I was depressed. I needed a way out. And so this is what the Lord told me. This is what I understood. I understood. This is what the natural man took me. Listen, water baptism took me, washed me, cleaned me up, made me, and I felt like I was born again. It seemed like the air sparkled. It looked like it had fire, fireflies around me occasionally. And I was just experiencing what's called the newness, the newness in life. And this is, what, this is what's so important. Now, I, it's just like when I was born naturally, I really didn't know everything about holiness. I didn't know everything about, but I knew that I was on the right track now. I knew that it, what got me that far was listening to the word of God. I wasn't going to quit listening to the word of God right there. I was going to keep listening to the word of God because I knew that his word was life. I knew that his life, that his word gave me direction. And you know, you, you don't know it all at the very beginning. You, you, it's hard to comprehend the spiritual things. The Bible says the wind blows where it lifts and you hear the sound thereof, but you can't tell whether it's coming or going. Listen, God takes you and moves you and you'll open pages of the Bible and you'll see things you never saw before. Somebody will come and give you a word and speak to you and it's God speaking to you in a sense and you realize to move in the spirit is a different uh, it's a whole new ball game that you have to then learn to, to move in it. It's just like when you're a sinner. You're a sinner. Sometimes we're not that, that bad of a sinner. But you see some people getting ahead in life and sin. And then you decide, make that decision. Well, you know what? I'm going to go deeper into sin. It's, that's what you call temptation. Some people do go in there and never come out alive. Others, by the grace of God, when they're in there, they come out and they are redeemed by the blood. But they're only redeemed by coming to the blood of Jesus and, the, and understand that blood was shed for them. Now, 
This is what's so wonderful about it. When you're baptized in Jesus' name, you might, you might have gone in with a bunch of habits and you still might come up with the desire for those habits. But this is the difference. The Lord says this, you are not a sinner anymore. Even though you have an urge in you to still want to do some things that are not right, I see you holy and pure. Therefore, you have just the way you wanted to do Learn to do bad. Now, in your spirit, the little good that you have felt, you've got you to get a hold of that and say, that's what I want in my life. I want to grow in righteousness. I want to grow and I want to do right. I want to hide the word of God in my heart that I might not sin against you. The, the psalmist said, yes, we have served other lords, uh, but thou art God, and you're the only one that we're going to name. That's the way we were. Yes, we serve other, other lusts. Uh, we serve other, other urges. We serve other unctions that we had in our mind. But now that we've come to God, uh, listen, God washed us. We're born again. He cleansed our minds, uh, and that's where with your mind you begin to serve God. You you don't do the things you used to do. You don't read the things you used to read. You don't run with the people they used to run with. They used to do these things. And so therefore, you start your way to the kingdom of heaven, to the kingdom of God. And you start to enrich yourself. And you stop. And you start envying bad people. We've all envied bad people. It's the way we, we grew up with them. But there came a point where you part ways. There comes a time where things change. There comes a point in time where you made decisions. And the decision that you made there in the watery grave is the one that you live for. No more. No more uh, immorality. I, got, I came to the Lord. No more immorality in my life. No more drugs, witchcraft in my life. No more swearing. No more looking at dirty stuff. No more being, uh, being uh, joking dirty things. No more making fun of Christians. No more. My life totally turned around. No more going to the bar. No more shooting pool there. No more uh, looking, amen, for, uh, looking for a company when I left the bar. No more, no more. Everything. As a 21-year-old, quit. I quit cold turkey. That was it. I knew it was the way. And I, the little that I had held on to, the little that I touched, that's what I wanted in my life. But listen, there is an adversary called the devil. You already have a sin nature in you. But what's happened is the sin, when you were circumcised, the Bible says, he cut, even though you had this mortal body, he cut the sin nature from your soul and your soul is right and pure. And yet you have this body you drag around and you go to do good and evil is present. Why? Because it's with you. You're carrying it around you. It is the flesh. The flesh is the flesh is the flesh. Your flesh is not holy. Not until you continue to separate yourself uh, and you seek after holiness. Separation from evil. It comes with a conscious decision. Now, every time we, we do things, every, every time we, we go to do right, the Bible says evil is present. Yeah, well, in you and... There's an outside, something that is on the outside that will always bring you advice or counsel or ideas or, or another way, a, a different, maybe it's a, the shortcut in, in this or that. It's called the devil. He's the one that puts doubt in your life. He, that's what he wants to do. He wants to put doubt, number one, that you're saved. He wants to put doubt in your mind that if this is real, if God's word is real. You know, they'll say, well, there's also the versions of the Bible. No, there's not. There's one main version, and everyone is copied off of that, and it is diluted from that point on. Yeah. 
I'm telling you the truth. The King James Bible is the Bible that God ordained through a king. He wasn't a good king, but he didn't write it. All these scholars put it together. Now there are different scholars, one or two or three, that say, well, this and that, and they, we're going to put our own version. Now, now there's so many versions of it. It's, it's, there's too many of them. But the only one you need is this one here that is coded. I'm going to tell you, that's the truth. That's coded to the Greek and the Hebrew. It's the only one that, that does this. And so this is what, but nonetheless, all that aside, when we preach out of it, it works. When we say, uh, these signs shall follow them that believe. And by the way, some versions don't even have that verse in there. Oh, that's, that wasn't in there. Some, somebody that didn't have the Holy Ghost, I guess, or the full of the devil say, oh, that verse of scripture wasn't there. It's always been there. It was there. It is. In its numerical structure, it belongs there. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall speak with new tongues. They shall cast out devils. You'll see things like that where it begins to empower your life. It begins, to, it begins to, you know what, then, if that's the case, then I can, like Jesus said, I can walk on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and none of these shall in any way hurt me. I'm not talking about natural. Don't go out and step on a natural scorpion because it will sting you. But the Bible uses that uses it as a metaphor of demons and devils. That's what it uses it for, serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. So in getting baptized and getting the Holy Ghost, and ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you, you're not going to be a, a superman, but you're going to have the ability to do right. You're going to have the ability to live for God if you do right. If you do wrong, even baptized, sin lies at the door. If you're going to walk in sin, it's going to stick. It will. But the beauty of, of, of the blood of Jesus is when you're baptized in Jesus' name, it's called grace. That you're really struggling to do the right thing and you fail in one thing. The Lord still sees you as a child. He still sees you saved. He's just giving you the grace period to go and say, one evening say, Lord, I'm sorry that you know, I, I, I really hurt that person. I really shouldn't have done what I, I stole this item. And Lord, it's from my own nature, but I'm stealing less. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> You're stealing smaller, all right? But you get to the point where sin does not have dominion over you. You have now the power to do right because, number one, you know what right is. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill. All the commandments, also the things of the Spirit lead us to do that which is right. That's, that's, that's a true Christianity. That's where God deals with us consistently. So it is the devil. For Peter said this, and it's very important because Peter was the one that when he writes, you listen. When he, or you, 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 you read. When he speaks in the Bible, you listen. Why? Because the Lord said this about Peter. Whatsoever, this man has the keys of the kingdom. He told us about water baptism. He told us, he even tells us uh, in his epistle that the life figure where baptism does also now save us. So he, as written in the heaven, baptism will always, is the only mode of salvation when you start this race. So don't, don't let your minds make, that, you know what that will make you do when you become so, con so concentrated on it, you will be compelled to tell others about it. You will be compelled like I was to tell my, my family about water baptism in Jesus' name. They didn't like it, but they couldn't resist it. They couldn't resist the truth. They would get angry because of it. And, uh, but the more the angry they got, the, the Bible says, well, they came to the Lord. They, they found the Lord initially through Sister Lydia and myself. We were the ones that would tell them. Now, they, now, now it's a different story. Uh, they don't really understand what they had. But I'm here to tell you that this is the way it works. Amen. Yeah, clap your hands to the Lord. It said this. This is what Peter said. Peter said, be sober and vigilant because your adversary, the devil. You have an adversary. Jesus is an advocate and we have an adversary, a prosecuting Attorney, all right? 
He is your adversary. He is what is called the accuser of the brethren. He will accuse you of stuff uh, that you've done in the past that's under the blood, and he will accuse you of stuff you never even did because this is the way he is. He just wants to put doubt. You'll never be good enough. You'll never know enough scripture. You'll never, but listen, you can't listen to the devil, and you got to realize what, what Peter is telling us. You have an adversary. He's as a roaring lion. He won't shut up. He'll keep telling you what a fool you are, what a failure you are. Yes, you're just a hypocrite in church, but yet you're doing everything you can. That is the devil roaring, telling you, listen, you might as well quit someday. You might as well. You know what? You've already put enough time in. You're not over your problem yet. You might as well just give up. That's just the devil roaring. That's just the devil making noise. But he can't make you do anything. The devil is a liar. He can't make you do anything. He can't force you. He can't, tort he can't do anything. Once you've got your mind made up that Jesus is all the way, he can't make you deny the Lord. He walks about seeking whom he may devour. Whom he may devour. And all you have to know is tell him, you may not devour me. It's like mother may I, you know, like little kids. Mother may I, I forgot how the game went, but you say, get five steps this way. And you have to say mother may I, if you didn't, you had it back to the end of the line, I guess. Got to remember on 70, that's first, second grade. Listen, he, he walks about seeking who he may, he is the, he is a reality, the devil is. He's a reality. Therefore, we know this, that we resist the devil. He will flee from you. The scripture says he will put Satan under your feet shortly. That means when he seems like you can't get, pin him down, uh, the Lord is going to either put him under your feet or behind you. Or he will flee from you. The devil is not your daddy. So if he, if, he, if he starts telling you, who's your daddy because he did something right, Jesus is my daddy. But I'm not Jesus. But I'm trying to be like Jesus. And I'm going to get there one of these times. I'm going to be successful in serving God. Who wants to be successful serving the Lord? Yes. Order my steps in thy word. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. This is our attitude. We, you need to have an understanding that you have the ability now to take dominion over serpents, scorpions, over bad habits, over bad attitudes. You, you, you see, because a lot of things, let's say you are raised up a... a, a Something that won't affect somebody here. I can, well, not a, it'll, affect, it'll affect everybody, but you have a main problem in your life. Let's just call it lust in general. Uh, you have a lust for food, all right? Everybody has a lust for food. All lusts are not bad. But don't you like good things? I do. Let's talk about good food. Pastor always does. <laughs> I'm not, a, I'm gonna steal a page from him now. I, I, but, and, and, but it comes to a point in time where if that becomes your focal point, then it is a hurtful lust. And so the Bible tells us that the devil comes. You see, the Lord tempts no man. The Lord tempts no man with evil. The Lord just doesn't do any tempting. It is the devil that comes to tempt you because he knows your past. He knows what you used to do. He knows your favorite drink. He knows uh, your party style. And, though, and therefore, you might even try to mimic in the church certain party atmospheres because that was in your nature back then. I'm here to tell you that the further you get away from your, your past, the better off you are going to be. I had, when I was first in church, we were in church and 
And uh, we, were, we, we were all beer drinkers, you know. And so, and so one time I was embarrassed before, my wife, before I knew my wife as my wife. Uh, my sister brought her over and I had, oh no, no, her friends came by to, to talk to us. She wouldn't get out of the car to, because she, I guess she knew I lived there. I don't know. But when the, we didn't even want to answer the door. And so I don't know if Hernandez is here, but my old buddy Hernandez, here he is. He'll attest to this fact that we didn't want to open the door because all our tables were full of beers of can and cans of beer everywhere, every nook and cranny because that's the way we were. So we didn't want to open the door. And uh, finally, my friend was started running, throwing stuff into the kitchen, and, and, and so did I. And then, and then they came in. And so that's the way it was. We were, we were the beer crowd. We, this is what we... But once I came to the Lord, maybe it's because I already had all the beer I could drink. I don't know, a lifetime. <laughs> but when I came to the Lord, it was easy for me to quit drinking beer because I gave my life to the Lord. And then... It's not many years after, you know how the devil is. Uh, uh, a few of the brethren of the church showed up and they said, hey, guess what we had? Guess what we had the other day? What? We had some near beer. I said, why would I want to have near beer where I could have the real thing? Why would I want to go halfway there and give place to the devil? Why would I want to tempt myself? You see, the Bible says this. Don't give place to the devil. Because there is a devil. And he uses people. It not, might not be your own that's going out, but it might be other people's lusts that they're trying to present into your life. That's why that, that woman that's already married might come on to you. Why is that? Because it's not in your nature, but it's in somebody else's nature. And the devil places in their heart to come and talk to you, even though it won't be of none effect. You see, this is the way life is. The devil plays, how do they say it? Chess, when you and I are used to playing checkers. You don't see it coming when there's checkmate because you thought you were something. You thought you were good at the game. I've done that before. I think I'm good at this game. I can play and I'm checkmated in five, six moves. No, world. Well, the devil, that's the way the devil is. You play with him, you lose. I guarantee it. You will lose. He's been around a long time. He's the most subtle of every creature ever created. He was the wisest of God's angels. And so therefore, he has it out for you. I'm, and I'm here to warn you today that he's a reality. And he wants to take you down. This is why when you come to church and you hear the word, and, and first we preach that you should tithe, does it really say that, that surely it doesn't say you should surely tithe. Well, we preach, and the reason some souls will never make it into the kingdom is because they're covetous. They will not give God what belongs to God. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. You rob God. You know what robbing is? It's a personal affront. If I go into your house at night and I steal something, I didn't rob you. I stole from you. But if I catch you on the street with 238s, instead of Acts 238s, and I get you with a gun... I am robbing you, person to person. When you don't tithe, you are robbing God, person to person. This is why it is such, this is why the devil doesn't want you to give to God. When the devil sits there and talks to you about your neighbor, I wonder, they don't deserve that job. They don't deserve that raise. They don't deserve this or that. What's wrong with you? That's envy. The devil knows that you, maybe you've always been envious. And so, therefore, he will, he will put you in situations where, where the devil's playing chess, remember? They're the ones that are going to come and say, hey, man, did you get your raise? It's, you're, almost like, you're almost like the one that, uh, uh, in the book of Esther, that he's full of hate, Haman. He's full of hate toward this other individual that the Lord has his hand on, and he just wants him to... He wants to be better than him and for him to bow to him and therefore it becomes his down, downfall. So we have in our nature all, everything that we could possibly do bad in here. But when God breaks the sin nature and he gives us a new heart, then we start to live right. Then you start to do what is God wants from you. 
You stop living in sin. You stop, you stop, if you commit adultery, you don't commit adultery anymore. You know what adultery is? Huh? A person that's married, being, uh, having a, a, a relationship outside of that marriage. It doesn't matter if you're married to someone else and someone else, you still, even though you're married, you cannot do that. The wicked mind thinks of a lot of things. And so, this is, then it says fornication. What does that mean? Pretty much is this. Everything that is being cast on us in this present day, all this woke garbage that's coming our way, all the, all the lesbians, all the gays, everything they want to throw our way so that we can be accepted and just shut up. We, I cannot be shut up. I can't shut up about I must tell you that you must not, you must not compromise with it. You can't give yourself and say, you know, and, and side with them. You can't. You must. If you're going to be persecuted, you're going to be persecuted for righteousness sake. But that is what God tells us. It's amazing that they want to get a marriage license. Two men or two women want to get a marriage license. Or I'm, well, I'm skipping somebody. Or a trans wants to get married with another trans. That gets pretty confusing. It is. Nice. Think about that one. But what it, it is, it is a fact that it's this plain and simple, okay? Marriage is only between a man and a woman. Therefore, whether they get a marriage license, whether they get a marriage license to marry something else, maybe a Martian, an alien, I don't know. Whatever. Today is just whatever you say you are, that's what it is, except here. They do not have the right to tell us how to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Therefore, here's where you have to, you, here's where you need the Holy Ghost boldness that, that you will not let the world shape you in your thinking. You must think according to the word of life. You must think according to what the scriptures tell us. Therefore, the, the Bible said, therefore, the sin shall not have dominion over you. Clap your hands to the Lord. He will give you. Put on the whole armor of God that ye might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness in this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You can get, the devil can even enter, come into your dreams. Called a nightmare. He, he, things can happen where he will attack you. If you do drugs, those crazy thoughts you get are from the devil. It opens your mind to demons. Therefore, if you were ever caught up in this stuff, you have to renounce the hidden works of darkness so that you can live for God and make it into the soon coming kingdom. Would you clap your hands to Jesus right now? Clap your hands to the Lord. And once you come, and once you come and you stand for the Lord, Jesus said, you know, the Lord told him, listen, when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man and he walketh through dry places, rest, seeking rest, and findeth none, he saith, I will return to my house from which I came out. And when he cometh, he findeth it swept and garnished. Then he goeth and taketh to him, seven more wicked spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there, and the state, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So, that tells you this. Once you start living for God, it's a one-way road. You keep going forward. Because if you ever go back to the stuff that you used to do, and you think you're going to, you, you might think you enjoy it because you can enjoy sin for a season. But we're talking about everlasting life. We're talking about eternity. Eternal life. The Bible said the state of that man. Have you? I have seen many of my uh, individuals I started running this race with. And they can't even communicate with me in the state that they find themselves in. They look like, they look like, uh, they look like a wreck. They look like, like, a, like a leftover remnants of the 70s. Amen. They look like a 60s, uh, 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 a person uh, 
But when you're old, you don't look good anymore. I mean, to be a hippie back then, you, you, you know, you used to worldly and, and used to strut your stuff. But when you're 70 and you think you're cool and the whole world laughing at you when you're walking by because what a mess. That's the deception of the devil. When we take his eyes and see through his eyes, then you're messed up. Lord, let us give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart. Let us not be covetous. Listen, now is the time where you cannot have, listen, my, the pastor's preached about it before, but you cannot have the media, you cannot be under his thumb and under his control. Yeah. Where you are, you know, you can, you can wa- watch a lot of good stuff. That's wasting time. But n- normally, you will catch a lot of bad stuff that comes your way. And if you see bad stuff, more bad stuff is automatically going to come your way. This is why your children should not be watching. You should monitor their stuff because... We are in a war for our children. We are in a war for our own soul. We are in a war for, it, for, the, for the church itself. Stand with me tonight. Clap your hands to the Lord. The devil. Jesus said this about the devil. The prince of this world comes, he said, and he has nothing in me. That's where you get, that's where you want to get to, where he has nothing in on you. You won't get there automatically. And if you, if you can't, hallelujah. Amen. But what you don't want to do is go back. Once you start it, no turning back. No turning back. If you hit a bump in the road, you can stay there for a while, but do not slide backward. That's called backsliding. The Bible says, I will, my soul shall have no pleasure in that. You and I can still reach out to them, but the Lord hates backsliding. If we build again the things that we destroyed, then that is what is called backsliding. This is why this is your family. This is why we have this is why we have events here. You should be at these events. Because if you're always with your family, what's going to happen to you is you're going to make them feel like they're as equally good as the church. And when you come here and you make them come here to events, uh, then let me tell you something. They're going to, you're going to get somewhere. You're going to get the respect uh, and you're going to get possibly a conversion or two. There must be a difference in your lives. You can't have. Listen, I refuse I refuse to go to my family, my family's get-togethers in, in all the family that I have. And we'll stay there because if they're drinking and dancing and be playing the fools, uh, I left that life a long time ago. That's what you need to get. Don't be going to the dances. Don't be going to the, don't be going to the clubs. Uh, and, and they're thinking you're just going to sit and watch because it's not a good place to watch. It's not a good place to be. Why is that? Because you're going to be tempted. Every man is tempted. You're tempted. I'm tempted. Every man is tempted when they are drawn away of their own lust. It is in us. Therefore, we don't give place to the devil. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried... That means you were tempted and you endured it. You endured it. It's in you. It might be in your mind that this is what you want to do or that's what you want to do. If you endure it, but you don't do it, guess what? Some people have said, well, since I, I just give up because I, that's... No. You endure temptation because you shall receive the crown of life. <laughs> who, wants to, who wants to receive a crown of life? Everyone here should want to have a crown of life. So whatever, whatever it is in your flesh, whatever it is in your makeup that you, that keeps you from really serving or going all the way with the Lord, this is where you have to take a stand and say, Lord, I'm going all the way with you. 
I'm not turning back. I'm not going to be a stumbling block. I want to make sure that I make it in the coming day. Blessed is the man and woman that endureth temptation, for they shall receive the crown of life. That's what we're running for, saints. The Lord wants you to have a clear sound right now. He wants you to have a clear message. Not a, not a message of, well, you have heart. No, a clear message of what you owe the Lord. And whenever you feel like you're condemned you, or you get a spirit of condemnation, realize this. Therefore, there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. If you're baptized into his death, listen, you are in Christ Jesus. Therefore, refuse to get condemned for stuff that you already confessed and for forsaken. And you don't have to live under that. You just have to forget the past. Press on future. No looking back. Don't look at, don't look backward like Lot's wife and be lost. You go forward. You forsake your sin. You forsake your failure. You're going to, no doubt, you're going to fail at something else. But don't look forward to failing. Look, for, dread the day that you fail so that you can confess it. I like, I'm going to open this platform. I'm going to invite you to come and seek after God because we're living in a day and age where deception is everywhere, but we cannot deceive ourselves. Can someone shout amen? Take dominion over your situation. God's already given you power over it.